In 2020, the Tillamook Estuaries Partnership implemented a culvert replacement project on Pearson Creek on the Miami River that opened up over six miles of habitat for threatened salmon species. That culvert right now is a, a velocity barrier. When the fish decides that it wants to enter that tributary at certain flow levels, the culvert acts as sort of a kind of a shotgun barrel, a chute of water that is um, so intense that the fish cannot pass and therefore can't enter into those spawning grounds. These culverts being as old as they are, they're, they're failing as well. You have a culvert that's been in the ground for 60 some odd years, it's rusting out, and we can see catastrophic failures of the culvert themselves, which creates a, a hazard for people in our community traveling from one point to another. People might be trying to find emergency refuge somewhere else, and if those culverts are, are not in place and functioning, the road infrastructure cannot allow emergency access in and out. It's kind of a multi-benefit effort that we're taking on to address the importance of salmon and, and their biological needs, but also the needs of the community for long-term infrastructure resilience. The common practice these days is to replace culverts with bridges. That's for a couple of reasons. Ultimately, a bridge is gonna provide the most area for passage, the most clearance over a stream to provide biological benefit. And with increasing levels of technology, bridges have become cheaper over time. And so they actually can actively compete with a culvert design. So what we're doing is taking out that culvert and putting in a bridge. And in this case, even though we're pretty far up the valley, about three miles, the sediments that this bridge is being built on are approximately 90 feet deep before you hit any kind of structural material that you can build a bridge on. These bridges need to be built in a manner that can sustain high traffic loads, heavy traffic loads. We need deep structural components to maintain the integrity of the bridge long term. It's at the confluence of the creek and the river, so we are challenged with that kind of influence of the hydrology there. Uh, this is a e shocker for um, safe uh, capture and release of small salmon. That's what we're trying to do: is remove any threatened species, any uh, well, any species actually from the, the waterway we're working in prior to that culvert getting pulled, so we don't impact those fish. And then we ID them to species, and then count them up, and then release them downstream of the activity, so that they're out of the work zone. And so, ideally, at the end of this operation, which will probably take about 30 minutes, we'll have the whole reach that construction is occurring clear of any fish. You know, as always, I'd have to say that one of the most significant moments in the project was when the culvert was finally pulled. We're able to salvage a couple threatened coho juveniles that were released upstream of the project reach, and uh, so everything went really well so far. Um, we've got a, quite a ways to go, but today was a big day, kind of one of the days that stressed me out more than others. Just having to handle, uh, you know, special status species is always, you know, something we want to take great care with. So I'm glad that uh, it went successfully. Um, we're going to start seeing a bridge getting built over this opening now. It's pretty exciting. So a foundation such as this, we have driven piles or 16 inch diameter steel piles that are driven 50 feet into the ground. Um, and then that is uh, topped with a concrete. This is all the rebar that goes into the concrete structure. It's concrete and then on top of that is our beams. So these are 21 inch uh, thick slab beams and that's what actually carries the surface. When it's all said and done, there'll be some asphalt that goes on top of it, the guardrail. And if you look to the north and to the south, the alignment, anytime we can do a bridge uh, project, we try to improve the alignment, which gives us overall site visibility. It improves the site. So when a vehicle goes around a tight corner, they have the ability to see oncoming traffic. It really helps that situation out quite a bit. Today uh, we're setting the prefabricated deck slabs, um, which are basically the base of the roadway that's um, gonna make up the bridge. 
there's a series of seven giant slabs that weigh many, 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 many pounds that are being lifted in by a crane and being dropped onto the, um, the pile caps. So this is basically the start of the actual new roadway that we're seeing here. These are 50,000 pounds a piece. Yes. 50,000 pounds. So, you know, you've got a 50 ton crane picking up only one end of it and then a, a, a 38,000 pound excavator picking up the other end so that they can carefully, carefully set it down. So are you saying 50,000 pounds is not the same as many, 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 many pounds? <laughs> This is a, a broad partnership effort. This project is actually part of the Salmon Superhighway effort, which is an effort within the Tillamook and Nestucca Bay basins, looking at addressing all of the priority fish passage culverts that are out there that need replacing. The Salmon Superhighway is a collaborative partnership of federal, state, and local partners. We're working together to reconnect almost 180 miles of blocked habitat in the Tillamook and Nestucca subbasin. The Peterson Creek culvert sits at the mouth of Peterson Creek where it connects to the Miami River. And upstream of that culvert is 6.2 miles of spawning and rearing habitat for native salmonids, chum, chinook, coho salmon, steelhead, cutthroat trout, and lamprey. Those fish are going to be able to freely access that habitat for spawning and rearing now that the project's been implemented. We have great support from the community, especially Tillamook County, because our projects not only help fish and aquatic ecosystems, but also they have a huge community and economic benefit as well. So we're sitting here now with a, a finished bridge structure um, in the beginning of October. Um, the Peterson Creek Culvert Replacement Project started uh, July 1st of 2020. And behind us here, we have the finished bridge, um, a pretty substantial structure. These structures are supposed to last up to a hundred years um, in place without needing major maintenance um, and so over the two months the project was largely right on time so we're really pleased with with the efficiency of the of the build and the fact that given some of the challenges we faced it was on time we place native river rock on the surface of all the stream that was rebuilt and that will entrain with floods and mimic the natural stream rack that's already here. Chum salmon, coho salmon, or chinook salmon, they may try to spawn right here under the bridge this year um, due to all this great gravel material that's located here. Another thing that we implement is we'll put in what we call habitat rocks and they're larger pieces of rock material that are much less likely to, to move in a storm. And what that does is provides hydraulic refuge for the fish. When they encountered that culvert, especially at high flow, that velocity might be beyond their ability to swim against. So they're determined and they will try and they will try and they will try and in many times that can actually exhaust the fish to the point where they might not um, successfully reproduce. Birds, mammals like deer and elk can use an opening like this where they would have had to cross the road before and potentially get injured doing so. This has basically created a situation where the salmon and other wildlife that would want to move through this area can do so more freely. And you know, it really does affect other species than just salmon. It's been a few months since the bridge was completed and we've already seen some heavy rain and high water flows. The bridge has performed really successfully and we've seen multiple spawning groups of salmon upstream of the bridge structure. We have successfully built a bridge that's gonna serve this community for many, many years to come. And even more importantly, we have reconnected habitat that's gonna ensure the survival of Pacific salmon in the Northwest for generations.